What is life without a little bit of risk? If you guys thought I was crazy for buying my flooded BMW site completely as seen, well, I just 5X multiplied that one and bought this. 2010 Audi R8 site completely unseen and I legitimately risked it all and I'm not sure if that was the smartest choice. If you guys are enjoying this content, smash that like button, follow me on Instagram at BYBTim and let's get this video rolling. In the previous episode, I bought this BMW 435 with only 51,000 miles and I got extremely lucky. It only cost me $6,800 total and had absolutely no damage. I sold it for a whooping $20,000 and with that, I was hoping to try my luck once again on this 2010 Audi R8. All right guys, we are on our final stretch to Copar. We're just about seven minutes away. We do got our U-Haul behind us and we got our cashier check ready to pay for the car and see what we bought. Buying cars completely unseen is actually very scary, but the suspense of the whole transaction, the whole purchase is just kind of killing me. I want to know what is going on with the car. Man, we'll find out here shortly. Stay tuned. We are all finished up here. We got the vehicle paid for, got the receipt. And gosh, it is so sunny. I literally can't see anything. Couple minutes away from understanding what happened with the car. How come it doesn't start? How come they can't even get the door open? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's how you strap a car. But hey. Oh, all right. <laughs> Right, guys well there's no key here so I'm gonna go inside and see what's going on a few moments later well I just spoke with the people inside and they said there was no key well in the pictures there was a key description says there's a key the key is supposed to be right there but I guess it's not here so that sucks another thing is the engines in the back so we're gonna go ahead and rotate this we can't really strap it right now because the front bumper is literally sitting on this little thing so we can't strap it it doesn't look like it's been wet whatsoever, so that's interesting. And then, on top of everything, that's open, so that's kind of good, because now we have access to that right there. So that's the handle. Hopefully we can get it popped up. Let's hope for the best. To say the least, I was not disappointed just yet. So far the car looks dry, but what do we know without getting a closer look inside? key was missing and the passenger window was propped open got me a little bit confused. I was hoping once the loader puts the car down on my trailer, I can outsmart every locksmith and open the door to get a closer look inside. I mean, it looks good so far, you know? Don't look flooded, but what's this? <laughs> Let's see if I can open it right now. <clears throat> we have anything? I had the highest hopes the key was inside the car. After all, we still don't even know how many miles are on this thing. We paid over $30,000. We struggled and struggled to find something to pull the door handle with. Couldn't find anything until a good Samaritan came through with a long wooden stick. It ain't opening. After multiple failed attempts, we knew only a locksmith can help us out here. We had a four hour road trip ahead of us, so we had to strap up and leave. But before that, enjoy this montage of my new to me 2010 Audi R8.
Luckily, I was able to align an appointment with a locksmith on the way home. Otherwise, we would have had the RA stuck on the trailer because the emergency brake was up and it would be near impossible to unload without a forklift. The locksmith made a key, but it still would not open the door. The vehicle was electronically locked. You guys won't believe this even if I told you. So we got this hook into the ignition of the car through this crack like so but before that we got that hook to go under like let me zoom out we got that hook to go under here we also dropped a gopro with the flashlight down in there facing upwards to show us where the emergency latch for the hood was while viewing the gopro footage on my iphone we were picking at it for about two hours until we were able to get the hood open and pull this emergency latch in order to open this so we can get a jump box on right so once we got a jump box on everything turns on we have a car that's alive so now the guy is making a second key and hopefully we can turn the ignition on and actually unlock the car we have done it the car is unloaded it's on the floor e-brake is off it's in neutral we got it to roll out i did put a battery charger on the front so right now we have a locksmith coming in the next maybe 20 30 minutes and we're gonna see if he's able to make a key for this thing because if he does i'm gonna be super super blown away if there's no other issues with the vehicle besides that there's a lot of things that still confuse me. I reached out to the old owner. I found his registration inside the car and I reached out on every social media he has. Every number I can find, I texted and I have got no response. So the mystery still is in the air. What is wrong with the car? How come we went to the auction? The locksmith last night made me this metal key right here. This metal key was not supposed to start the car. All it was supposed to do was open the car. It fits perfect into this cylinder lock, but it does nothing. Car is open. It does nothing. I'm not sure if my cylinder lock here is broken or it's electronically locked. I have no idea. Let's wait for the locksmith. So after calling about seven different locksmiths, only one was willing to tackle the job. Wait, does this car only have 5,000 miles for a 2010? No way. We might have just scored the biggest gem ever. After an hour or so of fighting the Audi security system, it just wouldn't give in. We began to think that one of the two ECUs were bad. We had to cut a slot in the security bolts to remove the ECUs and we spotted one ECU had an interesting rust spot on the bottom. But these ECUs are absolutely waterproof, so I was doubting that was the issue. I had an idea on how to check the ECUs. I needed a powerful OBD computer like this Autel Elite Maxxis. Two and a half thousand dollars later and we scanned the car and both ECUs were working. We were confused. We thought that was the issue. Turns out they are good. At least we think so. Get ready to see what's inside here. Looks good. No signs of anything here. We have this corroded, so I think it's worth just sending it off and getting it repaired. Pause. But no, it's not worth it. Since both the ECUs work, why send them out to get repaired? I called the locksmith out the next day to try to make a key again, and still, no luck. Our brains were absolutely boggled. This should be a pretty simple process with the correct tools. He said he will do it manually by taking off the cluster and both ECUs, reading the chips and getting them all married together for us to start the vehicle. But it will take him a couple of days, so we will have to wait. Which leaves me here. I had a lot of questions with this car and I'm still very confused. Um, one of them being, why does this car have only 5,600 miles? Or does it have those mileage? Look at this. Does that car look like it has 5,600 miles? Hmm, I don't, <laughs> it doesn't really look like it. I mean, the engine is pretty darn clean. It's been standing for a while. That stuff back there makes sense why it's kind of dirty and dusty because you got open vents right here so rain could be getting in. But I'm very, very curious. I did read the ECUs with the auto computer and they said they had 9,000 kilometers on them, which is roughly 5,000 miles. So I'm not sure if this thing really has 5,000 miles, I've scored an absolute gem. On Carfax, it shows 5,000 miles, but very, very interesting. 
Let me show you guys the interior and why I think this thing does not have 5,000 miles. Look at that. What is that? Look at this. That's not 5,000 mile activity. Look at the seats. That does not look like 5,000 miles. If you ask me at least, I mean, maybe these things aged bad, but that does not look like 5,000 miles. Look at that. What is this? What is that? It seems like someone restitched it. Look at that. Anyways, um, steering wheel looks pretty clean. I did want to go around and show you guys that this thing is pretty clean. There's no really damage on it whatsoever besides the things that Copart did, which is number one right here. I'm not too worried about. We can fix that or maybe get a lip. And then the second one was this black marking, which is right here. So the one on the hood will actually polish out, but the one on the bumper is a little bit deeper and will need some paint work. But I don't even know what to say at this point. I'm hoping that we can make a key for it and everything's gonna be perfect. I'm not sure if the motor even works or anything. So many questions in my head. I'm just happy we're back home. We got the car here and so far it's not worse than I expected. But besides that, if you guys enjoyed this episode, smash that like button and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out. Yo, this white sand beach. It is so nice out here.